respiration key questions, going over a few of the questions that have appeared on the Leaving Cert Biology exam. And the purpose of this video is just to show you that if you practice doing the questions, that if you use your textbook, if you watch a few videos and listen to your teachers, these questions are totally doable. It's just all about practice. So first question, name the three carbon molecule which enters the mitochondrion. So this is at the end of glycolysis, what enters the mitochondrion? It's pyruvic acid. So part two, name the two carbon containing molecules produced when the three carbon molecule above is broken down. In other words, what's produced when pyruvic acid is broken down? The answer is acetyl-CoA, that two carbon molecule. So next part of the question, one of these carbon containing molecules formed at two above enters a series of reactions. So we know that it's acetyl-CoA they're referring to. So they're asking what series of reactions does acetyl-CoA enter into? And acetyl-CoA enters into Krebs cycle, otherwise known as the citric acid cycle, that series of reactions. So next part of the question, outline the events that take place in the electron transport chain or system. So think in bullet points to make it easy for yourself. Firstly, NADH transfers the electrons to the electron transport chain. That's number one. That's how they get there. The electrons will then pass from molecule to molecule, releasing energy. Some of that energy is used to make ATP, and ATP is made by the addition of a phosphate, adding a phosphate onto ADP. Some of the energy is lost as heat. At the end of the electron transport chain, the electrons will then combine with protons, transferred also by NADH and oxygen to produce water. So next question, give a balanced equation to summarise aerobic respiration. Asked quite a lot, so really important that you do know it. So write it out a few times just to make sure that you have it. Name the storage polysaccharide in humans from which glucose is produced. In other words, how do humans store glucose? excess glucose, they store it as glycogen. So glycogen is the answer. And the reason for this question is, remember, respiration is all about the breakdown of glucose. The next question connected to this is, give one major storage location for this polysaccharide. In other words, where would glycogen be stored in the human body? So it's in the liver and muscle cells. What happens to pyruvate molecules that prepares them for Krebs cycle? In other words, you could say, what happens to pyruvic acid molecules that prepares them for Krebs cycle? Pyruvate loses a carbon atom, or you could state that pyruvate loses a carbon dioxide. You could also state that pyruvate is converted to the two carbon acetyl-CoA, and you know that's by the loss of a carbon, carbon dioxide. Name the three products of Krebs cycle. So we have those carbon dioxides, NADH molecules, and one ATP per cycle. Briefly describe the faith of one of the products. So it's important that you know something of all of them. Well, the carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. The NADH transfers electrons to the electron transport chain and the ATP that can be broken down to release energy. So let's go through these true or false questions. Aerobic respiration occurs entirely in the cytosol. That's false. The second stage takes place in the mitochondria. Glycolysis is an anaerobic process. That's true. There's no oxygen involved in glycolysis at all. Question three, none of the energy released in respiration is lost as heat. That's false. We know that some of the energy is lost as heat. Question four, in respiration, all of the ATP molecules are produced in Krebs cycle. That's false. Question five, ADP requires an input of energy to produce ATP, that's true. Question six, when glucose is fermented by yeast, so that's anaerobic respiration, ethanol and water are formed, that's false. And question seven, fermentation, so anaerobic respiration, releases more energy than aerobic respiration, that's false. This diagram outlines respiration in yeast cells and the first part of the question asks you where does stage one take place? So where does glycolysis take place? It takes place in the cytosol, the liquid part of the cytoplasm. Complete the table by inserting a letter or a name. So you can see here in the table we have to find compounds or substances that have six carbon atoms. And this is really straightforward. It's just checking do you know what compounds have six carbon atoms, three carbon atoms and two. So the first one is glucose. It's what we start off with, C6H12O6. So your answer is glucose has six carbon atoms. What do we know then has three carbon atoms? Well, we know it's pyruvate or pyruvic acid. At the end of glycolysis, glucose glucose is split into two molecules of pyruvic acid, each with three carbons. Then we know that after that, pyruvic acid is converted into a two carbon molecule, acetyl-CoA. But you could also answer for this one, compound A, which is ethanol, that has two carbons. 
Name gas X and gas Y. Well, gas X has to be carbon dioxide and an easy way of figuring it out is look at pyruvic acid and look at the gas that's coming off so that we know that it loses a carbon as carbon dioxide. And again, down at the bottom in Krebs cycle. If we look at the electron transport chain, we can see that those electrons are going to combine with gas Y, which is oxygen. So we know that gas X is carbon dioxide and gas Y is oxygen. Name compound D and give two functions for it in yeast cells. Well, we know compound D has to be water because it's at the end of the electron transport chain there in the diagram. And we know that oxygen combines with the electrons that pass over the electron transport chain and protons to form water. So give two functions of water. Well, it's the medium in which chemical reactions can take place and it's also used for transport. So what you'll find when you do these questions is that the same information is requested. It's just phrased in different ways. So as long as you know the story of respiration, as long as you can write it out and you can write your own notes and you can follow what's going on in your textbook, you are well able to answer all of the questions. It just has to be practiced. So the best of luck. Remember to use your textbook, to write your own notes, to listen to your teacher and most importantly, do those past examination questions and check the answers. Best of luck.